Praise the Lord from whom all blessings flow. My name is Sean Henry Scott Sr. Today is our Hand of God Live Midweek Miracle Service. Midweek Miracle Service. And if you're tuning in for the first time, welcome. If you ever want to get in contact with our ministry, feel free to call us, excuse me, at 614-847-2057 or 614-723-9770. We'll do our very best to get back into contact with you. If you want to contact us by way of internet, contact us at www.teamjesususa.com. That's www.teamjesususa.com. Now, as we always do, we begin with the word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank and praise you for waking us up, allowing us to be in the land of the living, Father God, above anything and everything else, Father God. We are alive. We have another opportunity, Father God, to give you praise, honor, and glory for your name is worthy to be praised. I just pray, Father God, as we are heading toward the observance of Shavuot or Pentecost, as some know it as, that whatever it is to be Manifest it, Father God, if it's just revelation of your word or who you are, Father God, so we can serve you better today. Father God, you touch and fill your people from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, Father God, that no plague should come nigh our dwelling place, Father God. Just ask and pray, trust your kind of glory will fill the earth, Father God. Let your anointing destroy each and every yoke, Father God. We need you, Father God, each and every day. Thank and praise you for your grace and your mercy, your anointing, your power, your presence. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Once again, like I said, we'll be, I might have to turn the fan on, getting a little warm here in Florida, muggy. Um, I'm actually on my last couple weeks here. I stayed here longer than I normally do for, you know, I actually wanted to. We're trying to establish ministry here in uh, Florida. You know, I'll be going back to West Virginia, trying to establish uh, a ministry there. And then, you know, all the work we did in Ohio. So Ohio, Florida, and West Virginia, and then wherever else God will send us. But one thing I try to stay and remain faithful to is recording and uploading these sermons <clears throat> to share what I believe God is saying in the seasons and the times he's saying it. So important, so important. Um, we're on our last few days of observing or recognizing and studying counting Homer. I, I want to say, for the record, I've never ever, I just it just dawned on me, I've never been on anything for over 40 days in studying and, and preaching and ministering and teaching. And um, it's amazing um, how vast the word of the living God is. And I had never ever in my my, my, my preaching life in over 19 years, 20 years have ever um, been on anything for over 40 days. And we have literally been observing. And I know they, they were instructed to count the Omer for 49 days. And... Um, Honestly, been meditating and thinking and talking and preaching and ministering on this for this amount of time. It's, it, it, it's mindful of the fact of what they were told to do. And, you know, I, I can envision, I don't have a, a physical congregation anymore. You know, I help plan them. But I can envision, if I had, how we would be directing the people concerning kind of the Omer. This is how we learn who our God was, is, and is to come. This is how we know him and, and you know, we study and we preach and we teach. And I realize the reason why people don't know God concerning his word and some of these things is because we don't preach them and teach them. I'm probably going to turn this fan on. I'm just trying to let that make the noise. Excuse me for a second. Getting a little warm. But the reason why we don't know him is for the very same fact is because we do not share and preach and teach these things. So like I said, we're started out talking about countdown to Pentecost. We know that Passover was over, and after Passover, it was instructed that they get ready for Pentecost, or Shavuot, which is observed seven Sabbaths after Passover, on its 50th day, and that was spoken in Leviticus 23, 15, and it says, And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete even until the morrow after the seven sabbaths shall ye number 50 days and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the lord so it was instructions that the lord had given them in the bible concerning 
Omer, counting the Omer and Pentecost. You know, you know, he don't God don't make suggestions. That's one thing we need to be one hundred percent clear about. He doesn't give us suggestions. He makes he gives us commands. And on meditating yesterday when I was ministering online, one thing I recognized is that he commands us a blessing. A blessing. People who don't know God or understand God or or read the word or study to show themselves approved, they don't know him. They they think it's all about rules and regulations. You know, I can't be no Christian, I can't do this, I can't do that. Let me help you understand. Everything is based off of some form of rule or regulation. I was talking about how gravity, how if gravity did not obey, that it would be chaotic because we drive cars, you know, boats, ships, everything is based off of the gravi gravity of the earth, you know, in, in conjunction to the sun and the moon. And so everything has to obey gravity. So it's not like... Um, Gravity can just wake up one morning and be disobedient, you know what I'm saying? Because the world will be chaotic and, and, and it will be tragedies and, 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 and catastrophes all over the place. So um, everything is based off of, uh, I don't, I don't, the word rules and regulation, I should say laws. Laws of nature, laws of environment, laws of, of our, our physical body. There's things we know we have to eat certain things to get what we need to get so our body keeps working. You know, like a, a vehicle needs, you have to do things. So to say that uh, the sovereign God that we serve would not have given us laws like they did at Mount Sinai as they was waiting to receive the laws, uh, the Torah, it, they, was, it, they was in bondage for 430 years. So they needed something as they pre was preparing to leave because they was leaving a heathen pagan culture. They was leaving the Egyptians. They was in bondage for 400, so for 430 years, so you can imagine uh, your let me see, great grandma, great grandma, or granddad, who was the dad, because the dad has a seed. I got granddad, great granddad, great great granddad, great great granddad. So that's four. So 430 years, I give them the benefit of the doubt, I'm 30. So and even with people living longer back then, you know, in some cases, the fact of the matter is 430 years of bondage. This is all you know is the culture that you was raised in. You know, there, 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 may, there may be have been some who was able to get off in the, the corner every once in a while and not observe or be forced to do the things that they, uh, the Egyptians was doing. But for the most part, the only thing they knew was the culture of the Egyptians. They built their the things they worship, they worked on them day and night. They knew everything about the, the, the things that they were doing because they did it with their hands. That's why God exclusively said in his word, do not worship things created with man's hands, things that you create because what he was showing us in the scripture is that what kept these people in bondage is when man has forced other men, mankind, to, to build something and then they will worship the thing that they built. He was letting us know this is not to be done. Then we have, you know, we have things that God has created in us that we need to understand and know. And that's what the Torah was all about. The Bible was giving us, God was giving us something from the, from the Torah to help us understand how we can stay out of that bondage mentality and don't end, end up having generations of, of curses for disobeying him. You know, anybody who knows the true love of God know that he's not trying to bind you. He's trying to liberate you. He's trying to free you from your natural mind state. And then you say, well, what's that got to do with 2018 and who we are now? Well, it's the same way. We need things. We need rules. We need structure. You know, thou shalt not murder. You know what I'm saying? We need things to keep us in check because our human nature is to act in the flesh. You know, people get upset. Like they got road raging. You know, you have somebody merge into you by accident. It's just an accident. And all of a sudden you got two people fighting ready to kill themselves. The only thing that keeps people completely going overboard is the back of their mind. I don't either want to go to jail or I don't want to have any physical harm. And that's what the word of the living God does. It keeps us from physical harm so we can inherit the promises that he has for us. And it keeps us from being in bondage like jail. So the giving of the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, also called the Pentateuch, to the Israelites on Mount Sinai. So they was given, given rules and regulations, given the law. That's what the Bible calls it. Let's use what the Bible says. They were given the law to keep them, to instruct them in righteousness so they can get back in right, a right relationship with this sovereign God. 
because Adam and Eve had fell. A synopsis of the whole Bible is Adam and Eve fell, and through their falling, we lost so much that we were given through them, through the first humans. Through their disobedience, we lost so much. So there's a plan put in place for us to be reconciled to God so we can inherit his promises. Excuse me. And one of those things was the, 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 that he gave us the Torah of Mount Sinai. Now they was told to wait. So Shabbat is considered the day that God made them into their own nation. Their own nation. There was a time where God chose them. He said, I did not choose you because you were the mightiest, the strongest. You, you, you were the few, you were the least, you were the weakest. He chose us that we would obey his word and be used to glorify him in the earth. God, the Bible says God used the, the, the base things to, to, to show the mighty and to bring them down and make them humble. So the counting of the Omer concluded with the bringing of the Omer, which ended on the 50th day. And that's, we got a few days and we'll be into that. We'll be, we'll be observing um, what we've been <laughs> anticipating. If you do something for 49 days, believe me, and you're expecting something on the 50th, there's a, a level of expectation for you. And why do we do all this? We do this because Acts 17, 28 says, For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your po own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. What we are learning, what we are doing is we're converting into the characteristics of Christ. We are trying, to, it says, in him we live. You know, we understand those of us who understand that knows our life is not based off our occupation, our color of skin, our height, our weight, our financial status. It's not based off any of, the, any of that. And every day I wake up, I'm striving for the faith that was once delivered for the saints because the weatherman will say what the weather is and they'll talk about the condition of the of the government that talk about all these things that have nothing to do with who Christ said we are. So we literally have to fight to stay connected to Jesus Christ and what he said versus what the world is telling us. That's the liberty that he's given us. For in him we live and then we move. Our motivation for the things we do are based off of what God has instructed us to do. Matthew 6.33, seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's our motivation for the things we do. That's why we, we, we read the, the Bible and, and, and in the Moedim and the seasons appointed times for God, we pass over Pentecost and, and Tabernacles. We do what God has instructed us to do. You know, so many people are so consumed with so much, so many things in the world, and then they're frustrated because they don't have any rest and they're beat down. It's because you've put God on the back burner. You got to make Him first. It says, in Him we live, we move, and our being, our being, the whole purpose of my being is to glorify God. And some people say, well, where does that leave me? Let me help you understand. He, he's always had your best interest in mind. He created you to, 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 to win. He created you to succeed for his glory. That's why he created you. He created you so you could be used to reveal his glory in the earth so your light could shine. And people must will come to you and say, what must I do to be saved? He created you with that purpose. He's omniscient. He knew what he was doing. So even after God sent a delivering the person of Moses, the millions of free people still needed something to govern them, to keep them from falling back into idolatry and sin. Speaking on, we're going to touch a little bit like we were talking about when they were given the Torah at Mount Sinai, when they was after they counted the Omer. Then we're going to go fast forward into the New Testament. So they needed something to keep them from falling into idolatry and sin. Why did they need? Why do we need something? Because our our human nature is self. That's what our human nature is. If you look about, look at the story in Genesis, Clarence, and Adam and Eve, they didn't need anything. They didn't want for anything. So why is it that her lust will cause her to want something that she did not need? Well, you know, God gives us the power, which is his Holy Spirit, which was given the day of Pentecost. He gives us something to keep us and help us understand we don't need what they're offering. So he gave them something to keep them from falling back into idolatry sin. They needed to, the commandments to obey, to prove their allegiance to God as his holy people. Not only were we given something to help us and keep us, we're given something that will prove that we truly love God. When you follow the Bible, the Torah, the law, and the prophets, when you follow the, 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 the scriptures and do what God has called you to do, that's proof positive that you love and serve God because you're putting him first. 
After the Passover, the people were commanded to count the Omer. Counting the Omer reminds us that the redemption from slavery was not complete until we received the Torah. So, counting the Omer um, was a way uh, God used, I'm going to put this the correct way from my reading and studying, that there was a space of time where God had the people wait and he had them count the Omer for 49 days and, and, and on the 50th day he gave them a promise so it was a way uh, and their redemption from slavery was not complete until they received the Torah Shavuot observed and celebrated seven Sabbath after Passover we said that already the feast of the Lord or foreshadows <laughs> excuse me foreshadows of what Jesus would fulfill when he was born so I have to understand the things in the scripture was a foreshadow. He spoke it, then he did it. It was real obvious. He spoke it, and then he did it. There's no mystery about how our God operates in his word. Because what he did for us, he made it perfectly clear for those who can read the scriptures and understand what he was going to do. And it's important for us to also understand that um, as we prepare to conclude uh, the scripture concerning counting the Omer, um, before we turn over to the New Testament, we need to understand that um, it was a promise. We know our God to be a promise keeper. And what, the, what promises do he keep? The promises that he put in his word. That's why it's so important that we know what the word says concerning his promises. So often, when I'm doing Q&A Bible studies, people simply do not know what, what they have coming to, them, coming to them by way of inheritance. Now, if you was to get a job, the one thing you want to know if, if that job offers any benefits, one benefit that people are really sincerely concerned with in this day and time is health benefits, especially as we get older. You want to know if that job has any, because they help, help stuff, Excuse me, stuff concerning health is so expensive. So one thing you want to know are the benefits concerning health. Then they want to know if there's any vacation time and sick days and so on and so forth and 401, all these different things. So when you take on a new occupation, excuse me, you want to make sure or be concerned with the benefits that the job offers along with the, with the wages. Now, put that in the spiritual realm. The wages of sin is death. So... There are wages, according to the Bible, in the spiritual realm. The Bible says in James that he didn't know to do good and do it not to him, but it's a sin. So you get paid, you reap what you sow when you sin against God. When you know it's good, know you're supposed to do it, and you choose not to do it, it's a sin to you. And the wages is, is death. It will lead to an uncertain death, spiritually and naturally. Because if you don't repent and turn from your sin, and you stand before God, Depart from me, you work of iniquity. What else is there? You, you, you've operated in the flesh. And I don't know why this is a, a, a no-brainer a no -brainer for people because it's common sense. We understand in the natural, like I just talked about the job situation, if you do something against that job that you know you weren't supposed to do and you get caught and you get fired, that's it for, that's it for everything. No benefits. You're done. And it's the same way in the spiritual realm. God has given us things to obey in his word. And we try to complicate the issue because it's like we want to push it to the back of our mind to where no matter what we do, God's going to accept. I don't know where people get that mentality from. I love in the Bible where it says Job eschewed evil. He didn't even want to have anything to do with, with evil. I want to read in the New Testament, as I, I did a couple weeks ago, I believe, concerning the Acts of the Apostles upon receiving the the, the Holy Ghost, the Day of Pentecost. We're going to read... Um, few scriptures here. I'm going to start at uh, chapter 1. Might as well start at verse 1 and read and I'm going to go over to 2 after a few. And the reason is why is the former trustee have I made O Theopolis of all that Jesus began to both do and teach. And to the day in which he was taken up after that he had through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. So we see here, prior to the giving of the Holy Ghost, 
he had given them commandments to the apostles he had chosen. We all know he chose them from their occupations and they dropped what they were doing to follow him. Almost like the children of Israel had been delivered by Moses and were given commandments. I want you to understand that because people don't connect these until the day which he was taken up after he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Verse 3, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them forty days and speaking of them pertaining the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. So we see, Scripture makes it perfectly clear, to whom also showed himself after the pastor, many of our proofs being seen within 40 days. So we know counting the Omer is 49 days. But we see that it says they've seen him 40 days speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And he and they being assembled, just like they was at Mount Sinai, being assembled after a certain time. He told them to wait for the promise of the Father, which said ye have heard of him. So we're no longer are waiting for that promise. But what we do is we preach and teach these things to each and every generation in their times and in their seasons. That's why I'm a, I'm a firm believer of the fact that this is... There's three times during our, our calendar year uh, that we should all, every ministry, every God-fearing, faithful ministry should be teaching and preaching the Moedim, God's appointed times. This is the one time that we should all be doing the same thing. And I know that's a big statement, and it's a bold statement because there's, there's, there's thousands and probably millions of churches possibly, so many denominations. And Ephesians makes it clear that we're only going to be united and connected in the faith. So what we do is we preach the same thing at the same time in its season. So he told them to wait for the promise of the Father which said, Ye have heard of me. Verse 5, For John truly baptized you with water, you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, Will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? See, that he was talking spiritual. They were thinking natural. That's just how we are. Our concern as a people, when we're being oppressed by a people, at that time it was Romans. In the, in the uh, Old Testament, it was Egyptians, Babylonians. You know, it was all different kinds of people. So their, their whole thing was, we want to go back to Jerusalem and have a temple. And he's trying to help them understand, look, there's, there's come a time where you won't worship God in Mount Gerizim or Jerusalem. You can, you know, those that worship me will worship me in spirit and in truth. So that's what he was trying to help them understand. Verse 7, and he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Verse 8, but you shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Verse 9, and when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus which was taken up from you into heaven shall come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. So we all know, according to Scripture, how Jesus will come back. It's written in his word. This is the foreshadow for when he comes back and raptures the church. Verse 12. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey. Um, and they were come in and went into an upper room where abode both Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon, Zealous, Judas, the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplications with the women and Mary and the mother of Jesus and his brothers. So Jesus told them to wait, so they went to wait. 15. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of disciples and said, The number of names together were about 120. Verse 16. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have be fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spoke before concerning Judas, which Jesus gave guide to them they that took Jesus. 
I know I butchered that scripture, but I want to explain it to you because I hear the Holy Ghost speaking to me. Um, he is letting them know that the scriptures which they have at that particular time, which obviously was the Old Testament, he is letting them know, men and brethren, this scripture must need be fulfilled. So the scriptures that they have available to them, they're letting the people know in this time that it must be fulfilled. What that means to us is that everything that was written must be fulfilled. The foreshadows that God has given us is he gave us 66 books. Now the scripture makes it clear the earth cannot contain the books of the things that Jesus did while he was on the earth. So therefore he gave us what we need. So many people are always trying to dig and go outside the Bible and do this, that, the other and find out this, that. Look, you got everything you need right here. Understand the foreshadow, understand the fulfillment, and understand what you need to do to stay obedient. So, according to this, Peter let them know that, you know, men and brethren, this scripture must needs have be fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spoke before concerning Judas, which which was God to them that took Jesus now. Also, one, another thing that stuck out is that he let them know that the Holy Ghost revealed it to David. Once we receive the, 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 the gift of the Holy Spirit we're able to interpret the scriptures which is the prophetic word of God before we receive the Holy Spirit we can't understand what the scripture how the scripture connects to one another the Bible says start to show thyself approval work from the name not be ashamed rightly dividing so we, the, what the Holy Spirit gives us the power to do is connect the scripture where it's supposed to connect and where it's supposed to go 17 for he was never with us and have obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity. And falling headlong, he burst asunder in the mist. And all his bowels gushed out. Excuse me. Verse 19. And it was known unto all the dwellers of Jerusalem. In, in so much as the field is called their proper tongue. al Kadamiah, I probably butchered that name. And it said, the field of blood. 20. For it is written. In the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein. And his bishopric, let another take. So his offer, so his charge went to somebody else. Verse 21. Wherefore are these men which have company with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us? 22. Beginning from the baptism of John unto the same day that he was taken up from us. Must one be ordained to be witness with us of his resurrection? Verse 23, and the appoint and they appointed to Joseph called Barsabas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. 24, and they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, show whether of these two thou hast chosen. So during their time of waiting for the promise from the Father, they had to replace Judas. And they prayed and asked God um, who he wanted to be appointed because they, they, it was written that they needed to have 12. 25, that they may take part of the ministry and the apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell that he might go to his own place. 26, and they gave forth their lots, so they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the 11 apostles, which makes 12. So that's what the, one of the things they was doing while they was waiting is they was Allowing, as the scripture reads, Bishop Prick, or the office of charge, go from Judas to Matthias, who the lots fell upon. Verse 2 in uh, the Acts of the Apostles. I mean, chapter 2, excuse me. And when the date of Pentecost was fully come. Now, we, we need to understand um, when God gives you a specific time or date for something, it's going to be full. It's not going to be halfway through. Never in my my life, I'm 49 years old by the grace of God. Have I ever witnessed God revealing his time and, and, and things not coming when he said it was going to come? But it still takes faith to understand and believe in, in, in God's timing. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, there were they were all with one accord in one place, which they was instructed to go and be. The same where they was at Mount Sinai waiting for the Torah. People wasn't scattered all over the place. They was where they were supposed to be. And doing what they were supposed to do, which was at that particular time counting the Omer. In this particular time, they were told to wait. Verse 3 And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and sat upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem 
Jews devout out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not the all these speak Galileans? Verse 8. And how hear we every man in our own language, wherein were we were born? So I'm going to stop right there. Um, we'll be preaching and teaching the culmination, obviously, and sharing the day of Pentecost is purpose, reason, and season on this upcoming Sabbath. That's how we observe is that we preach on it, we teach on it, and we remind and refocus ourselves as to how it was we became a nation of, of royal priesthood according to the scriptures. We have no righteousness. Nothing in us of our DNA. It's not because I'm a tall black person. That doesn't give me anything. Nothing. It isn't because I may have or may not have money or credit. That doesn't give me anything concerning the spiritual things. The only way we can uh, enjoy the manifestation of the revelation of spiritual things to natural is by understanding, knowing, serving, obeying our, our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. No flesh can glory in the presence of God. So flesh and lies won't get you nothing. And I've said it, and I've been beaten on it constantly by obedience to the Holy Spirit that it's unfortunately that in this day and this time, so many people have exchanged the, the truth of God for lies. They worship all kinds of things. The traditions of men, you know, stuff they come up with and make up. They, they come up with their own holy convocations, which are in no way, shape, or form holy. They're just ways to make money. But that's not the, neither time or place for this platform. You know, the scripture makes it clear. When I get led there, I'll preach on it. But I just pray in the name of Jesus Christ that uh, something that was read or said would be helpful as you continue on this journey for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Like I said, we have a few days left, um, and we'll be at the 49th day on um, the 6th day. And then on the seventh day is our Sabbath, which is the 50th day. So it's, it's awesome that it's fallen on that day. It's fallen on Sabbath, um, which is, is supposed to, I believe, you know, in my studies. And I thank and praise God in this 2018, the revelation of the word of, of God that he gave me concerning 2018 was overthrow. It is high time for the people of God to uh, get rid of all these man-made fleshly idols. Tear them down. Get rid of them. Get them out the house of the Lord. So you want the glory of the Lord to, to be in the temple and to fill the people and the Spirit of God to minister to people like it never. You get rid of all that stuff. All them things that are not in the word of the living God. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you once again, for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, Father God, we know beyond a shadow of any and every doubt, Father God, you are Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. Without you, we are absolutely nothing. Even those who claim that you don't exist know better because they can't explain the things that they can't explain. Only you can make sense where there is none. Father God, you are everything. You're sovereign, you're omniscient, omnipotent. We thank and praise you for being who you was, who you are, and who you are soon to reveal yourself to be when you return. I thank you, Father God, for allowing me to be woke. It's, you speak in the, in the Bible, Father God, where they have eyes and they perceive not, they have ears and they hear not, Father God. Allow us, the, those that love you and follow you, to hear what the Spirit is speaking exclusively to the church. The message for the sinner is to repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. But the message for the believer is preach and teach from the mountaintops. Jesus is coming back. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your anointing, your power, your presence. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray for now forever. Hallelujah. Name. My name is Shine Reese God Senior. If you ever need to get in contact with us, feel free to call us. Continue to pray for our ministries. May God bless you and heaven's face continually and always smile upon you.